David Taub with okay. GV Wire here with WWE Hall of Famer Greg the Hammer Valentine, who will be in town this coming weekend for a card show. Hammer, it's a great honor to talk to you. Well, thank you, David. Thank you, David. Sure. So it's going to be WrestleMania weekend, and you're going to be in Fresno, which is awesome. But uh, you know, what does WrestleMania mean for you, and what was your top WrestleMania moment? Oh, wow. So I really, there's a lot of them. I was in seven WrestleManias, and then I was at WrestleMania 20 when they inducted me in the Hall of Fame. I guess that would be the top one, uh, 2004 in the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden. Now, you were part of the WrestleMania 3 card, you know, 90,000 right. plus well, people. Sure. Yeah. So what was it like? That was probably the largest crowd you've ever wrestled in front of. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I was in total awe when I went out there. And, you know, I, I'd never been in a crowd, in front of a crowd that big. WrestleMania 3, my wife, who I'm, who I have with me here today, she was actually, we were just uh, going steady and she, I actually took her to that WrestleMania three. She couldn't believe it. And uh, so that was, that was a, a fantastic, fantastic. WrestleMania three, I'm gonna say was not my favorite match. I think my favorite, you know, I enjoyed WrestleMania one against Junkyard Dog and WrestleMania two against the British Bulldogs with uh, Brutus. And then there was uh, WrestleMania four, five, six, seven. I was all part of those. Right. Now, was WrestleMania three probably one of your best payoffs ever? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I, I was expecting. A lot more because you're thinking, you're thinking, uh, wow, 96,000 people. But, you know, it was still a good payoff, yeah. There you go. But you're probably your most famous match, the one that's endured most that people even still holds up to the same, people saying how realistic and tough it was, was the dog collar match versus Roddy Piper at Starcade 83. Why do you think that match still holds up today? Well, you know, when we first did that thing, you know, they were talking about Ric Flair and Harley Race and all those other matches on the card. But since then, that match has surpassed all expectations and all the people just love it because of the, uh, the reality of it and because we just beat the hell out of each other and nobody had ever seen a match like that where two guys are hooked together with, with a dog collar. And so I think that's why it holds up today. And it's, it's definitely a, an icon of wrestling, a dog collar match. Now, from my understanding, obviously the Starcade match was broadcast, still preserved on TV. Did you and Piper kind of go around the horn in the uh, mid-Atlantic area with that dog collar match? Did you guys have to do that yeah. more than once? You know, we thought it was over. Ah, we're done, you know, no more dog collar. And they actually booked it all around. Back then it was the Mid-Atlantic Territory. So we went all over with that dog collar. But you know what? It wasn't like the first one. We were already sore, beat up, and bruised. So it wasn't as good as that one. You know, we just kind of went, went through the motions. Because we were banged up, you know. You know, Greg the Hammer Valentine has the reputation of a guy who can absorb a lot of pain. And it really looks yeah. like that. I mean, you know, how, how do you do that? You know, you know, at wrestling, you're supposed to be trained and you're supposed to know how to do it. But the way you wrestled, you, know, you had probably one of the hardest chops. Uh, you, you know, you absorbed so much punishment. How much of a toll did that take on you? Well, I'm still alive today to talk about it, and I'm not crippled. The only time I really messed up my leg, I, I tore the uh, quad off of my knee when I was wrestling in Chicago. But, you know, it took about three years to recover from that because I was 50 years old then. 
the older it gets, it's harder to repair yourself. But I, I made a comeback from that. And uh, I, I was just trained to be stiff, trained to make it look real. And I threw the hard chops and Piper threw hard chops. I mean, everybody that I worked with, like Tito Santana and Steamboat and Flair, we all, back, back in that day, we were all about believability and making it look like a contest, even though it hurt. And I, you know, I, I really, I really think I enjoyed the pain because I would enjoy it because I would make the people believe. I mean, I really was hurting a lot of times or I'd hurt my opponent a lot of times. And a lot of opponents didn't like the fact that I had hurt them. But you had Piper, you had Flair, you had Ronnie Garvin, the Bulldogs. They all worked just as stiff as I did back in the day. So it was just acceptable. acceptable. And, and we wanted the people to believe in it. And we enjoyed, I really enjoyed the pain. <laughs> so let's, talk about, let's talk about you growing up and your background. Um, you know, where, where did you grow up? Obviously, you're the son of a uh, second generation star, son of Johnny Valentine. Right. So, were you really uh, from Seattle? Yes. Well, Bothell, Washington, and then Renton, Washington. So they, those are suburbs. Renton, of course, is the home of Boeing. There was another town I grew up called in was called Hobart. So, but that, it was all the Seattle area. So yeah, I really grew up in Seattle. My dad was was from Seattle too. And did you go to high school there. Uh, yes, I did. I also, my, I, my mother and dad split up uh, eventually, and because uh, my dad was on the road and she didn't want him to be a wrestler, but I actually went to Hollywood High School for a couple of years in California, but I went back to Seattle and graduated from there. Did you play any sports there in high school? I wrestled some, but wrestling wasn't, uh, we didn't have good coaches back. Wrestling was not, you know, wasn't really part of their curriculum, but I I played baseball. I love baseball, football. A uh, couple of times uh, I got hurt. So I said, I don't want to do this. Basketball wasn't too good for me, but I enjoyed baseball. So you joined the WWF in the 80s. I'm just wondering, prior to uh, joining the WWF, did you ever wrestle in Fresno at all? No, but in, I was uh, wrestling in Los Angeles in 1975 when it was Michael Bell and it was part of the NWA and, and we wrestled out of the Olympic Auditorium, but we wrestled all over. But the far north as we went was Bakersfield. So we didn't go to Fresno. But I went to Fresno when I was in WWF and any, the Selling Arena, I think it was called. Yeah. Any memories of wrestling in Fresno or in Selling? I, yeah, I had good memories. I, I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed because I lived out in New York and I lived in Charlotte. And so anytime I came out to the West Coast, whether it was Fresno or whether it was Sacramento or LA, I loved being in California. I really did. Right. Now, you weren't in Fresno, probably the most famous event where Roddy Piper, Bob Orton, Don Morocco got into their incident with the Fresno police. I think you were wrestling across the country that night. I'm sure you heard about it. What was the locker room talk when that happened? Well, so I heard that they uh, they were inebriated a little bit. And <laughs> they had a Lincoln Continental. And I don't know how, but they drove it on a railroad track and they got stuck on the railroad track and the police came. There's also another incident where we stayed at that Holiday Inn in Fresno. And one time Bob, uh, he didn't have anything on except his cowboy boots. <laughs> and he came out and it was like a big atrium thing, right? He came out and the door shut behind him. 
So he was stuck out there. So a couple of incidents right there. You probably didn't know about that one, but um, the Fresno police were okay with us. You know, they were good. Uh, here's an interesting fact. The Fresno police officer who confronted Bullet or Cowboy Bob, he's now the mayor yeah. of the town. Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Dyer, you know, he was a, a sergeant back then and used to be the police chief, and now he's the mayor. Oh, uh, how about that? All yeah. right, good for him. <laughs> so, WWF in the 1980s, that must have been just a crazy travel schedule. How did you put up with that? How did you survive? You know, you can be going cross country from East Coast to West Coast to East Coast in consecutive nights. What was that like? Well, when I first went to WWF, I was 29 years old. And we didn't travel all over the place like that. But in 1984, 85, I believe it was 84 when Vince, what, you know, he, he pushed that WWF tape everywhere. And we started going everywhere and on the road. And, and you know, I think it's just, I was so excited to be part of that. I just didn't wear down, you know. I, I maybe started wearing down when I got in my 40s, but, you know, it was just, it was like the rock and roll band on the road. We just did it. We'd fly into L.A. and rent a car and drive up to Bakersfield, drive up to Fresno. So, I mean, it was unbelievable what we what we did and what we put our bodies through, but, I loved every minute of it. Was it tough for your family life? You no know, children, wives, girlfriend? Oh, was yeah. It I took, before me and my wife had our children, I, I used to take Julie on the road with me a lot. So it helped ease the pain, you know. That's nice. Now, you had some of the best ring ropes in wrestling. You, know, you had the, the black one with the, the heart and the, the hammer, that beautiful pink yeah. robe. Where do they come from? How much do they cost? And do you still have them today? Actually, I I just sold my last one to WWE for that hidden treasure thing that they were doing on A&E. <clears throat> that, that was the hammer robe. But uh, there was a lady in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. Her name was Olivia. And I think me and Rick were our best customers, Rick Flair. And we, uh, I mean, I, I think I had 12 robes at one time. And they were expensive. Back, back in the 80s, it was three grand we spent. Nowadays, that robe is worth 20 grand. So I hope you made, I hope you made a profit. Yeah. Yeah, I, but you know what? That... That helped me get main events because I'd come out. That came out without a tire, and the fans loved it. You know, that was just part of the deal. The rhinestones that uh, she had them made over, and she had these stones that were sent from Austria, not Australia, but Austria. And these stones, when they when the lights hit them, they just go crazy, you know. Just love love the robes. That was part of my deal, you know. So, what is Greg the Hammer Valentine up to today? I understand you're living in Las Vegas. Yes. So I love it here. I mean, we I've been here. My wife and I've been here four years and four months, and we spent forever in Florida. But uh, we were tired of Florida. We needed to change. Too many hurricanes. And I had, I had sold my house and I was living in my condo and I, I had sold that too. So it was time to get out of there. And, and I, you know, being a West Coast guy from the beginning, I love Las Vegas. I really do. And so is my wife. Have you become a Raiders fan? I am a Raiders fan, yes, sir. And of course, you know where their quarterback is from. Where is Derek Carr from? Fresno State. You're kidding me! I didn't know that. Well, thanks for telling me that. And you know where your new wide receiver's from, Devonte Adams? The new one, yeah. Where's he from? Fresno State. All right. So we, you got a connection here, then. There you yeah, go. I think the Raiders, Raiders being a new team and everything, and. 
And that's awesome. And we got into the playoffs and I'm a Raiders fan. My wife was always a Raiders fan back when they were in LA and when they were in Oakland. I never was, but since I've been out here, you know, I was, I've been a Bucks fan, Tampa Bay, of course, <clears throat> but I love the Raiders. All right, Greg. And finally, uh, your hair is still spectacular today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that what, what's your secret? Uh, my secret is I never did steroids because that makes your hair fall out. Um, my wife cuts my hair all the time and takes care of it. I'm going to give her credit for that. And just good genes because my dad never lost before he passed away. He still had all of his hair, too. So, you know. Right. And my final thing I noticed uh, in the background, that beautiful painting, that's a uh, human Piper in that dog collar match. Oh, yeah. I just got I just got that from a guy in New Jersey. He sent it out to me. That's the dog collar match right there. Nice painting. Just yes, keep your sir. teeth after. Did you lose any teeth in that match? What was the worst injury in that match that you had? Oh, I I got chipped teeth right now. <laughs> so, I chipped teeth is one thing. What do you expect after forty years of wrestling? You're going to have a few chipped teeth, but uh, that one right there, I was young enough that I endured pretty much everything. <laughs> So I was, I think when we had that, I was 27 years old. All right, Greg the Hammer Valentine, WWE Hall of Famer. You'll be in Fresno uh, this coming weekend for the card show. Uh, look forward to ha having you in town. Yeah, please. I, 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 I've been there one time before for these fellas and the card show. It was back when we were kind of shut down on the pandemic and everything, but now we're looking for a good crowd. I'm looking to meet all my fans. I'm excited. All right, Hammer. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.